The Sadness is a new horror film out of Taiwan about a viral pandemic and the bloody chaos that ensues. There is, as you might guess, a little bit of a parallel to the COVID-19 pandemic with characters saying it's like the flu and others saying it's far more dangerous and people who aren't taking it seriously enough on the news and stuff of that nature. But The Sadness is pretty far from offering any sort of thought-provoking social commentary. That kind of thing isn't really on this film's radar. It touches on the subject in a blunt sort of way, and then it moves on so that it can fully delve into its trashy exploitation material unfettered by that parallel that people would bring up regardless. You aren't likely to be too impressed by the opening minutes of the sadness. It's a little slow, the characters are pretty flat and uninteresting, cinematography is a bit bland, and the opening act plays out in an overly familiar manner, going through the motions and standard foreshadowing that films of this nature often do, seemingly out of just obligation for being in the genre. Luckily, everything changes once the violence kicks off. The first moment of violence sets out to grab you by the throat, and the film has no intention of letting go from that point on. By the time the subway scene rolls around, you will either be sold on the film or know it's not your cup of tea and jump ship. Director Rob Jabis, if that's how you pronounce it, is seemingly following in the footsteps of Gareth Evans as a white guy, Canadian in this case, Welsh for Evans, making his feature film debut in an Asian country with a lesser developed film industry. Taiwan in this case, Indonesia for Evans. It's a tactic that makes sense as a way to stretch a debut feature's budget, and I for one will be keeping an eye on what Jabis does next. He clearly has a lot of talent and the potential to develop even further with his next film. That being said, The Sadness does feel a little bit like a first feature at points, but it's mostly outside of the horror scenes which make up the bulk of the runtime, so its impact is limited. Also, like Evans, Jabis edited his own film as well. But actually, Jabis's film is a little bit closer to Evans's Indonesian contemporary, Timo Shojanto, with the ultraviolence and excessive gore found in the likes of The Night Comes For Us. There is an admirable commitment to practical effects, and they mostly look fantastic, with just a couple of minor exceptions. This is a full-on splatter flick, and the gore is decidedly excessive, with gnarly injuries coming in a wide variety of forms. The blood is ladled on so thick that it, at points, occasionally becomes a little bit comedic. And I don't know if veering into spoof territory with the amount of blood was an intentional choice for comedic purposes. I don't think it was. Or if it was an intentional choice, then it's at least a bit of a miscalculation since it pulls the viewer out of what would otherwise be an extremely intense moment. Now I want to make clear that this level of nihilism and extreme gore is built into the premise of the movie. It's not just gore for the sake of gore, though I wouldn't be surprised if Maybe Jabba's next film sets the tone for what type of horror he's into in general. Now my only other little quibble on the special effects front is that there are a handful of moments where I could really see the special effects, if you know what I mean. Most of the effects look excellent, but a couple look a little cheap, which isn't surprising given that it's a you know, pretty low budget for a first feature with this much special effects going on. When a guy breaks the glass of a fire axe box, for example, I could just see the cheap flimsy sugar glass crumbling instead of actual glass breaking. And when the floor of a subway car is completely coated in blood, I just see those gallon jugs of prop blood that are like a little too thick and a little too syrupy to be convincing, because I've used them. There's a moment where someone is supposed to be really pale, but they're clearly just wearing cheap white face paint. And also some of the blood on characters dries as a pinkish color, which is something that fake blood has a tendency to do, whereas real blood dries in more of a brownish color. But I mean, also just staying a deep red would be fine for the movie's purposes as well, instead of this like pinkish color, which just takes me out of the movie. Maybe it just stands out to me so much because I've worked a little bit hands-on with no and low budget special effects, so your personal mileage may vary. And to be clear, this doesn't really affect my overall view of the film, but at the same time, it's not something that often jumps out at me in other movies, so I figured I would mention it here. And I want to stress again that the vast majority of the makeup and special effects look truly excellent, extremely impressive for the budget. Now, I couldn't find the exact budget of the film. I don't know if that's public information. I think it's safe to say it's not a huge budget by any stretch. So it seems like maybe some corners needed to be cut in order to prioritize the rest of the effects looking so good, and that's why these handful don't look quite up to snuff. The plot of The Sadness is just about as straightforward as you can get. There are two main characters who get separated before the virus begins kicking up chaos in their community, 
and then the film just simply follows each of their attempts to survive and find each other. The simplicity largely works because the pacing is kept so fast once the violence starts, and there's enough specificity to each little encounter that the protagonists get into that it keeps the story from feeling overly episodic or repetitive, which it definitely had the potential to do. I caught what I believe are references to movies like In the Mouth of Madness, Irreversible, and Scanners. They're pretty subtle and they don't draw attention to themselves, which is the kind of homage that I really like to see. And it's a good way to pay homage to three filmmakers that I would guess probably helped inspire the film or just Jabba's in general. The Noe and Cronenberg influences at least seem pretty apparent. There's also a ton of nonsensically colorful lighting in the ending hospital scenes, which look like they're straight out of Argento's Suspiria. The flashy poll quote from Rue Morgue magazine for the sadness that's all over the marketing for the movie calls it the most violent and depraved zombie movie ever made. Now that's a ringing endorsement for many horror fans, but I kind of only half agree with it. And it's not the half you might expect. The film is without a doubt exceptionally violent and unquestionably depraved. It's actually the zombie part that I disagree with. I, it's not a zombie movie, I don't think, despite what you might have heard. A lot of people call it a zombie movie, I don't think it is. And I'm not saying that in a 28 days later kind of way where it's like, oh, they're infected with rage, but they're still essentially zombies for all intents and purposes, just a little bit faster. It's not that. Within the sadness, there is a virus that spreads through hordes of people who then seek out and kill the uninfected. But instead of the virus turning them into mindless zombies, this virus turns them into violent, depraved, psychotic, sadistic, and horny degenerates. The infected population of this movie, they can still speak coherently and they use weapons and tools. They're a more formidable and frankly more threatening enemy than the average zombie fare. They don't just want to kill and eat their prey, they take immense pleasure in harming and torturing their prey. The extent of the violence in The Sadness is extreme, and certainly not for the faint of heart. And included in that ultraviolence is also a lot of brutal sexual assault, which, you know, you might, that might turn you off the movie altogether. However depraved you think this film might be, it's a little more depraved than that. There's a literal skull fucking in it, and it happens to a poor defenseless person who is a developed character. Just to give you an idea of how fucked up and depraved this movie is. Don't show it to to Mammy, okay? She, she will die of a heart attack. The Sadness certainly does not pull any punches. It is not a film that I can recommend to casual horror fans or the squeamish. It is a brutal, visceral, and it's fucked up. And you need to be on board for some seriously fucked up ultra violence to enjoy this movie. If you fit into that category, then you're likely to really vibe with The Sadness and have a great time. Oh, and by the way, I don't really know why it's called The Sadness or why one of its posters looks like this. Uh, neither of those are an accurate representation of the film's style or content. And thanks for watching. You can subscribe right here to Brickwell Pictures to check out more of my stuff. I'll see you next time. So long.